The United States has experienced rather strong job growth in the past month. The latest jobs report from the Department of Labor shows 151,000 jobs were added in the month of August, and the rate of unemployment has remained at about 4.9 percent, unchanged from the month previous. However, one demographic of people that continue to suffer amid the economic recovery are men. The number of men that have given up looking for work is approaching levels that haven't been seen since the Great Depression. Their plight has been highlighted in a recent article published by The Wall Street Journal titled The Idle Army, America's Unworking Men. The author of that article is Nicholas Eberstadt, and he joins us now from the CBS News Bureau in Washington. He's also the author of the book Men Without Work, America's Invisible Crisis. Uh, Nicholas, it was a fascinating article, and I was going through it again uh, just now. Um, in the article, you say that during the past half century, work rates for U.S. males spiraled relentlessly downward. America is now home to a vast army of jobless men who are no longer even looking for work, roughly 7 million of them aged 25 to 54. That's a traditional prime of working life. So how dire is the situation for men in the United States right now? Well, Vlad, I think it's kind of a calamity. If you look at the work rate, the employment to population ratios for these prime age men, it's lower than it was at the tail end of the Depression in 1940. Uh, it's been going almost steadily downward, the labor force participation rate, for 50 years, whether the economy has been strong or weak, whether we've been in recessions or not. Nicholas, give us a sense of the demographics of these men. Who are this new class of men struggling to get these jobs? Well, if we take a look at the seven million men in this prime age group who are neither working nor looking for work, they tend disproportionately to be lower skilled. Uh, they tend disproportionately to be never married. They tend disproportionately to be native born rather than foreign born. And they tend to be disproportionately African American. Interestingly enough, that's not true for all minority groups or people of color. For Latinos in America, the work rates look very strong. So the question I think a lot of people who are watching this are going to have is what are these men doing? I mean, if you're not looking for work, uh, if you're not uh, working, what are you doing all day? Well, about one-tenth of these men are adult students trying to improve their skills and get back into the game. I'm afraid the other nine-tenth looks like what the Brits call NEETS, N-E-E-T, neither employed nor engaging in training. Um, these men, according to surveys, uh, do less help around the house than other men and employed women, less help with kids, less voluntary charitable work, less religious participation, less civil participation. It's like uh, TV, internet, and screens for a full-time job. So, Nicholas, is then, again, so as we dig through sort of the numbers and your research and analysis, is it because that there are just not enough jobs for these men? Because if you're not looking and you're not actively seeking, although you, you point out there's a small percentage of them that are actually looking to, to enhance their skills or increase their skills, but uh, is it simply because they're not accepting, for example, jobs, and, you know, I don't want to sort of make this a blanket statement, but are they not accepting jobs at McDonald's, you know, or custodial jobs? I mean, are there jobs out there, or is it because there are really not jobs for these men? Well, we've had a big slump in manufacturing, as you know, Vlad. But other countries in Western Europe and elsewhere have had big slumps in manufacturing, too. And our, uh, our not in labor force problem is much larger than in those countries. We have one aspect that I don't think we've looked at nearly closely enough, and this is the consequences of mass incarceration. There are now 20 million adults in our general society who are either ex-prisoners or who have a felony conviction in, our ba in their background. We have approximately zero information on their circumstances. And if we wanted to be serious about addressing this problem, one thing we'd have to do is try to figure out how to get those men back into jobs and back into society. Yeah, that's an excellent point that you raised there, Nicholas. And the other one I think is fascinating is for many, many decades in this country, working any kind of work, menial labor or otherwise, was seen as a badge of honor, even if it meant that you were doing something that perhaps didn't earn you a lot of money. Um, has that mindset sort of gone out the window? Well, um, 
certainly it's true that uh, disability payment has become a sort of an alternative lifestyle for a certain fraction of these men not in the labor force. I don't think it's a great lifestyle. I mean, also opioids and other sorts of addictions have increased with this lifestyle. It's not a happy way to live. but. Uh, a larger number of people seem to be opting in that direction. Nicholas Eberstadt, it's a fascinating article. Thank you so much for bringing it to life for us. We appreciate it. Thanks so much, Vlad.